I've got a load of potatoes, and today I'm going to show you some really cool, simple recipes to cook in your frying pan. Stick around till the end to find out my favourite. For the first one, I peeled three potatoes and boiled them, then gave them a really good mash. We want it to be nice and smooth, try to avoid any lumps. Next, break open a couple of eggs into a bowl and beat them together with a fork. Tip them over the mashed potatoes and I'm adding some ground black pepper and salt. To add a bit more flavour, I'm also going to add a handful of grated cheese. I'm using cheddar, but you could try using something like parmesan. Then mix it in with the mash. If the mixture is a bit thick and stodgy, you can add a little milk to make it a bit lighter. It needs to be a nice, smooth consistency like this, but still pretty firm, not too runny. Next, fill up a piping bag and cut a hole in the bottom. And it's ready to use. I'm drawing out spirals straight into the pan. Pretty cool, huh? The pan is on a medium heat and you can see there's a layer of hot oil, so do be careful. After a minute or two, when you can see the bottom turning golden, turn them over to cook the other side. I made a whole load of them. And once they've cooled down a little, they're ready to eat. They're nice and crispy on the outside with a beautiful potato centre. And they go great with a dip. For the next one, I sliced up four peeled potatoes into nice thin slices like this. Then start laying them in a pattern across the bottom of the frying pan like this. Once it's covered over, drizzle over a little bit of cooking oil. Then I chopped up some onion and bacon, scattered them over the potatoes and sprinkled over a little bit of grated cheese. Then repeat the process by covering over with another layer of potatoes, sprinkle over some onion bacon and cheese and this time I'm adding a little ground black pepper and a pinch of salt. Then cover it over with a third layer of potatoes and start cooking it on a nice gentle heat. I'm also placing a lid on top. After about five minutes you'll be able to see the bottom layer of potatoes have been cooking in the oil and it's starting to smell pretty tasty. Then take a tub of cream and start pouring it over so it almost covers the potatoes, but not quite. Then replace the lid and leave it on a low heat to simmer for about 15 minutes. Then when you check, you should find even the potatoes on the top layer are soft and nicely cooked. Then sprinkle over some more cheese. And if you're using an oven-safe frying pan, you can slide it under the grill to melt it. When it's bubbling and starting to brown, it's ready to serve. You get these delicious layers of creamy potatoes and bacon bits covered in melted cheese. It tastes amazing. For the next recipe, I peeled three potatoes and grated them using this food mandolin. It's really good. You get this holder to keep your hands away from the blade, and it works really well. There's a link in the description if you want to buy one. Then I cracked open an egg over the potatoes, sprinkled over some ground pepper and a pinch of salt, then mixed it all together. I heated up some olive oil in my pan, then tipped in the potato and egg mix. Pat it down into a nice flat shape and leave it to cook for five minutes. Once it started turning golden brown on the bottom, flip it over and cook the other side. You might find it easier to use a plate to do this. Leave it to cook for another five minutes on the other side and when it's nice and golden on both sides and cooked all the way through, it's ready to serve. I'm adding a tablespoon of creme fraiche on top and scattering over some nice fresh herbs. It looks lovely. And when you cut into it, you get this beautiful fried texture of the grated potato. And the sour cream complements it really well. For the next recipe, I sliced up three large potatoes into pieces about half an inch thick 
and I'm going to use my food mandolin again with this square cutter attachment to slice these potatoes into lovely even sized cubes. Next I put them into a saucepan and left them to simmer for a few minutes. Just to soften them, we don't want to cook them through. Then I drained them in a colander, waited until they were nice and dry and carefully transferred them into a frying pan of hot oil. You can see there's a good layer of oil here so it really laps around the cubes to fry them. After a few minutes the oil starts to absorb into the potatoes and you can mix them around on the pan a bit to cook them on all sides. Next I added a little bit of salt, ground pepper, some paprika and a squirt of garlic puree. Mix it in as they continue to cook. It gives them a lovely coating. I carefully tossed them around in the pan. And when they're nicely golden and crispy, they're ready to serve. I'm drizzling over some of this rosemary and garlic oil and scattering over some fresh coriander. And they're ready to eat, either as a side dish or as they are and we get some beautiful flavours from the paprika, garlic paste and the flavoured oil. So we've looked at four really cool simple potato recipes. Which is my favourite? Well the potato swirls are great. They're good fun to do. You could draw out different shapes. And they're a really tasty snack. I rate them highly. The grated potato rushti is also really good. It's pretty easy and quick to make and it's almost a meal in itself. There's a lot you could do with it, like have it with a fried egg and avocado or something. It's probably my second favourite recipe here. The sautéed potatoes are amazing. They're full of flavour and they're great as a snack or to accompany a bigger meal, maybe a barbecue. But my favourite recipe today has got to be the layered creamy potatoes. I based this recipe on the French dish tartiflette and it's a delicious meal in a pan. The cheese, cream, bacon and onion just give the potatoes so much flavour. It's definitely one I recommend. It goes really well with a side salad and you could have it with some garlic bread. You can let me know in the comments which one of these recipes you think looks best and if you try any. You can see more really cool frying pan snacks by clicking on the link. And if you've enjoyed this video you might want to consider subscribing so you don't miss my future content. Have fun, stay safe and as always, thanks for watching.